To chop framing, to pick out areas of interest so that the viewers can either interact directly by picking out an area of interest or they can sit back and let the director choose one or more areas that they might like to look at. And the plan is to make this available on a whole range of viewing devices from small screen devices such as a mobile phone through to large immersive displays and by capturing and maintaining all the source data that's produced at the front it becomes possible to repurpose the content for this wide range of display systems because you're not making the decision about the size or shape of the display device right until the end. We had a test shoot at a football match in um, London last October. It's always fun to go out and do this sort of thing for real rather than just in the lab. And this is an example of the 7K by 2K panoramic image that was shot. And it's interesting to compare the resolution of a part of that with what a conventional broadcast camera would capture. If we look at a small area that would typically be captured by a tightly zoomed in broadcast camera, even with a 7K panorama, it's difficult to get all the resolution you need. Compare that to the same shot framed by a broadcast camera with a long lens, and you see the, clearly the difference in detail. And it's even possible to go further. That's a, a 1920 by 1080 image um, just squeezed to fit on a PowerPoint slide, but you can really see there, you can clearly read the name on the chest of that player, when in the panoramic image you can't even see the player. We have done some work as well on looking at 3D reconstruction, um, very similar to some of the things saw, you saw in the previous talk. I'll just very quickly show you some examples, again looking at applying this for sports analysis, taking multiple images, separating out the players from the background, constructing 3D voxel models just as in the last talk, and then plastering these with texture images created from the, the cameras. And we've done tests, for example, with um, looking at football analysis. So this was um, starting with a live camera and then moving into our 3D modeled world to allow us to fly the camera viewpoint around so as to allow us to take the best viewpoint for the analysis that was going to be presented. This clip was put together with the aid of a BBC Sports director who said, this is the shot I want to use when I do this particular bit of analysis. And also, as was hinted at in the previous talk, it's possible to use this um, multi-view 3D content to produce conventional stereoscopic images. If you have a scene that you've captured and you've modelled it in 3D, you can generate a depth map. And there are some displays coming on the market now that will take in an image plus a depth map and use that to produce a stereoscopic image or indeed an image, a multi-view image over a, a small range of positions. So that's one area that we've been studying. Finally, there are some things you can do with 3D images to give viewers a, an opportunity to interact and explore an area. We've been particularly looking at the way the broadcasters cover large events like Wimbledon tennis or the Olympics where there are things going on in a large area all around the stadium and it can be difficult for the viewers to understand where the cameras are and how the views relate to each other. So we have a, an example where we can embed images in a 3D model having registered them into that model space. And this then allows you to see the video in the context of the 3D model and this is a first example here running as a flash plugin on a web browser so we can fly into the, the model of the Wimbledon complex and then we have embedded live video registered on the court and you could of course fly from one court to another so we can fly out here and fly across to another court and we're hoping this year at Wimbledon to try this out as a production tool with the broadcaster side to allow them to fly between courts in 3D just for conventional broadcast coverage but to provide a more interesting way of showing people what's happening in different areas. So to conclude, um, we're seeing a lot of technology advances in um, media production in directions including giving more realism to the images, more insight in terms of being able to analyse what's going on and more interactivity and personalisation. 
I've shown just a few of the projects at BBC R&D that are looking in this sort of area. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Grant, it was a wonderful presentation.